Let me ask you a question. What makes a better wartime leader? A career politician or a man who's willing to bury a tomahawk into his enemy's skull? Let me introduce you to George Rogers Clark. A brigadier General in the Virginia Militia during the American Revolution. If you've read my novel, The Last Marine, Book One, you'll recognize the name. But there's a character in there named President George R. Clark. George Rogers Clark uh, was not as famous as his younger brother, uh, William Clark, from the Corps of Discovery. George Rogers Clark uh, led a militia into what became known as the Bloody Back Country. In the American Revolution, uh, the British government was paying uh, Native American uh, tribes, nations, to slaughter American settlers on the frontier. Homes were burned, people were murdered. Refugees flooded into Virginia. George Rogers Clark formed a militia and went back out into that hill. His plan, his strategy, was to take the war to the British, to take land away from them, as well as to neutralize uh, the American Indians, to take them out of the war. He is infamous for uh, negotiations with several Indian chiefs where one, uh, one chief, or one very prominent chief, was uh, resistant to remaining neutral in the war. He wanted to side with the British. In a fit of frustration, George Rogers Clark picked up a tomahawk and buried it in the chief's skull. The other Indian chiefs decided neutrality was their best course of action. Clark had a lot of uh, a lot of gall too. He thought offense was the best defense. He's also famous for leading 170 men on a 200 mile trek in the middle of winter into what is now present day Indiana to attack a British fort that had a thousand troops in it. And he won. He obtained their surrender. He dreamed of taking Detroit, but that would never come to fruition. He had trouble recruiting men for that, uh, that mission, and priorities in the war changed. Clark is a man who thought big. Clark was a man who would fight big. He did not put limits on himself. He is the model for the character of President George R. Clark in my book. When the United States is attacked by the People's Republic of China in a desperate war Clark is a wartime leader who will not set limits on himself on what he's willing to do to his enemy to win. His goal is to annihilate the enemy of the United States to protect the country that has elected him president. How does the left control a man like Clark that will not live, limit himself, that will not contain himself? How does the left control a man that will think big and fight big and take it to the next, to any level to, to, to win? For that answer, read The Last Marine.